So we, we have been doing this for about, for almost a decade. Um, we've made about 100 million of them so far. You know, it sounds like a big number, uh, but if you compare that to the number of atoms in your body, it's, it's really minuscule. Um, and if we, if we, if we could get, get them all together and just annihilate them, then we could, we could you know, light a laser pointer for about a second, okay? So, and if you took all of the antimatter that's been created so far by man-made machines, it, you, know, you could annihilate it on your finger and it'd be equivalent of maybe lighting a match on your finger, okay? So it, it, at the moment, it's, it's really not a problem. This, this was a picture of our group meeting last year in uh, Vancouver, and you can you see me hiding in the back there. So this, I just want to give you some feeling for, in the movie, the, the trap looks, the, 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 the bottle looks like it's about this big, and that turns out to be actually pretty much close to what it really is. Um, this is uh, on the, the picture there is, is, is my collaborators, uh, uh, Makoto is from, from Triumph in Vancouver, and Richard is, is a student in Calgary. Uh, and there's uh, Carlos, a uh, Brazilian, and there's an American colleague, uh, what's his name again? Ben. Um, and that shows the size of the trap. The, he's holding onto it there. Um, on the right is, is just a, a, a picture of, of showing what the trap is, and what we do is we bring in antiprotons that we get from CERN. Uh, we do this at CERN because there's only two places in the world we can actually get antiprotons, uh, CERN and Fermilab. Uh, and then we get, we get positrons, anti-electrons, from a, from a sodium iodine, a sodium source, which is radioactive. Then we bring them together and try and make, what we do is we, we make clouds of, of anti-electrons and clouds of antiprotons, and then we try and coax them together to, to try and make atoms. And it, it's, it's actually an incredibly uh, difficult thing to do. Uh, I thought it was gonna be simple, and it's not at all. Now, Dirac uh, was an amazing character. Um, he won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1933, Remember, he was the one that predicted the existence of antimatter. And he says that if we accept the view of complete symmetry between positive and negative electric charges, we must regard it as rather an accident that the Earth, actually the universe, contains a preponderance of negative electrons and positive protons. It's quite possible for some of the stars the other way around, that some of the stars could be made of negative protons and positive electrons. Um, as a matter of fact, when we look at that picture again, they, that may all be antimatter for all we know. Because in fact, it will look exactly the same in terms of the light that it gives off. Because light itself, as we saw, light produced electron positron. It didn't really care whether it was an electron or a positron. And so anti atoms, anti stars, anti galaxies, anti um, galaxies, whatever, would, would look exactly the same as far as we could tell. And that brings us to the moment of creation, which, of course, is the Big Bang. And, and that's, that's another mystery for physicists that, that most people probably don't think is a mystery at all. And that is, just as we saw that a photon produced an electron and a positron, the Big Bang was neutral in everything. And so the Big Bang produced just as many positrons as it did electrons. It produced just as many protons as it did antiprotons. It produced just as many particles as antiparticles. And you might, you might just say, well, okay, I'll, I'll see the Big Bang was wrong. You know, I mean, you look around the world and you don't see any antimatter, so obviously the Big Bang picture is wrong. But in fact, the Big Bang picture predicts a, quite a number of things which, which we observe. So we believe it's right. And so the, one of the big questions in, in, in science is, is, is what happened to all that antimatter? I mean, it's not like you, you, know, you could just you know, take an exit door out of the universe. I mean, where'd it go? Um, as I said, 14 billion years ago, we start off with equal amounts. And then at some point, there was just a little bit more matter than antimatter. As a matter of fact, there was, for every 10 billion antimatter particles, there was 10 billion in one particle. And so the 10 billion and the 10 billion annihilated, leaving one. And the, the, the reason that we know that fact, actually, is because if you look at the number of particles in the universe compared to the number of light particles, there's 10 billion times as many light particles. 
Okay? And they come from annihilation. So that's not just, you know, like that number isn't just picked out of a hat. It's an experimental measured number. So that's one of the great challenges of physics. And the question is, is that we, we know that the answer lies in, in some, some very subtle difference between matter and antimatter. And the reason we're doing anti-hydrogen research is because the most precisely measured system in science is hydrogen. It's the simplest, and we can predict it incredibly precisely. And so if we can make measurements on anti-hydrogen the same we make on hydrogen and compare them, then we can see if there's some little slight difference. And so that's the idea. And the idea is, is, to, is, to, is to zap them with lasers, and then they, they, they emit light, and we measure that light very precisely, and we just see, oh, is, it, is, it, is the light coming from anti-hydrogen slightly different than the light coming from hydrogen? Okay. We know it's not a lot different. We know that right now. That's the idea. Another kind of interesting, funky idea is, is, is we don't really know a lot about gravity with respect to antimatter. I mean, for example, you know, we know perfectly well that the, the apple will fall to the Earth. And, and we, we're pretty sure that the anti-apple will fall to the anti-Earth exactly the same way. What we actually don't know, though, is whether an anti-apple will fall to the Earth, whether an anti-apple will be repelled by the Earth. That's, that's actually an experimental question. We don't know the answer. And, and it's actually an extremely difficult measurement to make. And that's because gravity is such, a, is such a weak force. But that's another experiment we're going to try and do. There's a lot of fun you can have with antimatter. Um, let me just quickly go through a couple of other big questions that we're, we're looking at. Uh, one is that it was a bit of a shock in the last five, about five years to discover that most of the universe is actually not made of matter. It's made of this stuff that's given very sort of spooky names of dark matter and dark energy. And we don't know anything about either one of those. And so it's kind of a spooky thing that 95% of the universe is made of stuff that we have no idea what it is. But as an experimental physicist, that's the challenge. Can we find out what it is? Um, dark matter is called dark because it doesn't give off light. It's kind of like a black hole. Um, but we know it's there. Uh, we, we actually know a fair bit about it in some senses, except exactly what is it? We don't know. And we're, doing, we're searching for it, as usual, um, in, uh, on Earth, in, in experiments in, in, uh, on satellites. Um, I just put up here Snow Lab, which is the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory. Uh, they've, they've expanded uh, to now have a number of experiments there, and some of them are looking for dark matter. Uh, we'd like to make dark matter. And the collider, the, the LHC, is, a, is the perfect place to make it, actually. Uh, dark energy is even, even, even weirder, having a clue. Um, in some sense, we don't even know where to start. Uh, and just to, to finish off, just the, the people here at the university that are doing research on, on antimatter includes uh, my colleague Wendy Taylor, who's, who works on ATLAS, the experiment at the LHC, um, Eric Hessels and Cody Story, who work on uh, ATRAP, which is an anti-hydrogen trapping experiment, uh, myself, I work on Alpha, which is an anti-hydrogen trapping experiment. And then we also have a bunch of theorists who, you know, try and tell us what's really going to happen. Um, if you want more information, there is uh, a number of places that you can, you can look to, to get more information, or else you can just ask me right now. Thank you. <laughs>